Well, was uh was not expecting to watch this show. Uh, let me preface this by saying, I don't usually watch porn. Uh, not, I mean, it's just not really for me. I mean, there was this awkward time when I was, I think, prepubescent, but you know, that's probably a story for another day. Uh, and then I didn't, I didn't watch any until I was in my twenties, and then it just, eh, I don't know, didn't really do it for me. I kind of came to the conclusion that just about all porn is kind of the same. Once you boil it down, something's going in somewhere, and then there's a lot of moaning, and and then, you know, y- you know the deal. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I don't generally watch that kind of stuff, and why I've never uh, watched a hentai all the way through. However, now I can say I've at least watched Interspecies Reviewers, which which was certainly something. However, I wouldn't call it a hentai. I would say it's like 90% of the way there. but it doesn't take the step of showing any genitals. I mean, I think there's like an outline like once, but it's it's not like a really clear cut out. Anyway, this is about as lewd as a show can get without going all the way. I wasn't going to watch it initially, but, uh, you know, I kept hearing things. And it some at some point, I was just like, eh, screw it. So basically, the premise of the show is kind of As the title says, uh, every episode, our main characters go out to a brothel, and then they sleep with some monster girl, and then they leave a review uh, on the wall in the guild hall, because it's like, you know, it's like any generic fantasy story, except it's all about uh, boning. (laughs) So we got, we got three main characters. We got the, the human, I think his name is Stunk which is a not a, not an attractive name. We've got the elf. I don't know what his name is. I don't think they say it much, but I also just don't remember. And then you've got the angel. Uh, I think his name is Krim. I don't know if that's a joke on, like, Cream. It could be. It might not be. I have no idea. And then there's a couple reoccurring characters. Like, I think he's a halfling. I could be wrong. And then one's a uh, cat man or d- dog man. It's a beast man of some kind. And then I think there's, you know, a couple others that they occasionally meet or talk to. And then whoever goes to each brothel leaves a review. And you get to see it either at the end of the episode or at the end of that session. You know, some episodes take one thing and then other episodes have like two or three different reviews. And let me tell you, mm, (laughs) those reviews go deep. Like you'd think this is like all fan service and, you know just constant like actually there's surprisingly a lot of thought put into it like i've seen world building less complicated than how this show treats its succubus women i don't think i mentioned yet uh the succubus women in this show uh everybody every woman in these brothels has at least a little bit of succubus succubus blood in them or genes or whatever so all the ladies are part succubus like maybe just a really tiny amount which which is why there's so many brothels everywhere, and which is why going to them is, you know, it's not like something you'd want to share, but it's not super taboo or anything. It's actually like, that's eh, fine. Go for it. Um, The, the show starts out kind of like, I don't want to say safe, but it starts off with uh, reviewing MILFs. Uh, they do elf women and human women. Uh, and with human women it's like you know they're old but the reasoning that the non-human characters give for wanting to be able to be with them is you know they smell different they have different mana i guess because to like the magical races that's apparently a thing when you sleep with them and then the elf guy's like oh she's not a day over a hundred it's like yeah but she's like she's not like physically attractive she looks like a grandma but then you look at the elf woman, and she looks like she's in her 20s. But the elf's like, oh, God, she's like an old hag. She smells disgusting or something. I don't know. It's just like they go into like all this detail as to why each of these characters feels the way they do. And it's like, OK, interesting. And then however, how they do the review at the end, they usually have like some sort of imagery or 
I, they they show something, and sometimes it's really creative and interesting. Sometimes it's kind of you know bland uh, in comparison to some of the other things they do. There was one episode where they like shot arrows at these statues or something, which was really interesting. But I didn't. I, I don't know if it represented something. I, I have no idea. That might have been the Cyclops episode, in which case I guess their eyes look like a bullseye. I I don't really know. Uh, I mean, you got all sorts of fantasy girls in this, all sorts of monster girls. You got, you know, uh, slimes. Uh, and that, that, I think that was the gender swap episode, which was something. <laughs> um, in that episode, there was also the hyena girl, which has a bigger schlong than the hyena guys, which don't show up. It, <laughs> like, mm, okay. Uh, there's minotaur girls, which just have massive honkers. And I mean, like, big johungas. Just massive wibbly wibbly wibblies. I, I mean, it's it's not just like, oh, here's an elf. Here is a... What are the fantasy races out there? Here is an, a gnome or a druid or... Like, no, no, no. No, not that simple. There's There's more. I mean, there's literally an episode all about laying eggs. Egg laying. Apparently that's a fetish in, in this world. I, I, it wasn't something to get me off it was just like fascinating to watch in like a morbid curiosity kind of way but i like actually enjoyed myself like it wasn't it didn't turn me on it was just like oh really interesting yes i see and then i mean that's kind of how my favorite character of the show is who only became my favorite character in the last episode he's the virgin who reads every single review and he's like a dragon man lizard man of some kind and then last episode he just magically transforms and everyone's like oh my god the virgin he transformed into a wizard that means he protected his virginity until he was 30 <laughs> like what what is this show i'm I, I i mean it's amazing and the reviews are never like all the way one way or all the way the other way they feel like genuine reviews i mean there's a lot of sevens a couple threes and twos sometimes there's zeros which means they didn't get to do anything or there was nothing enjoyable about the experience. And then there's a lot of nines, but there's only one 10 throughout the show, which I thought that was going to be the climax, but it wasn't, oddly enough. The The climax was just kind of an ordinary review. They got to be with like all the women they had previously slept with, which was something. There's also this whole like subplot about what's the worst uh, fantasy race that you could sleep with. And... Towards the top are demons and undeads. Un undeads kind of an obvious one, but uh, you know one of, one of those actually the, the undead they actually I think get a pretty halfway decent review because you know I mean they're just like human women except they kind of smell. And then demons just because nobody understands how demons work. It's like oh their whole thing is they need a contract and then they're fulfilled. But if you do the contract wrong or you or like whatever, then you know they can make it horrible for you. Like, they make this whole explanation about, oh, like, when you marry a demon girl, you have to propose correctly. If you say, I want to make you the happiest woman ever, um, she'll expect you to wait on her hand and foot forever, and you'll be miserable. If you say, let's be happy together, she'll, you, the, you, the two of you will be happy together. Like, she'll make you happy, you'll make her happy, and it will be great. But if she has kids, she might be a terrible mother. Why is there so much and such good world building from this almost hentai i don't understand it overall I wasn't expecting to like this show and then i was like hooked and i almost want there to be like a season two but i don't expect one the angel character also has this running joke where he's just got a huge slong which is interesting funimation apparently tried to dub this at one point and then they realized oh this is what we're getting ourselves into like i don't you, you, you don't communicate with the animation studio at all Apparently the manga is not that dirty. Like, it's about as clean as how they're subbing it, which is with copious amounts of censorship. Like I said, there's no genitals. There's just a lot of, like, boobs. Like, there's boobs everywhere. With the nipples. Everything. Um, but, like, there's no, there's no genitals at all. Like, there's a, literally one episode where they just screw in an open room, and they've all their junk is protected by these rays of light. There's another one where they go to the fairy girls and one literally sits on this guy's thing so that she can like measure it because they have to measure it to make sure, oh, will it fit into our fairy girls? And then Krim, of course, can't 
can't go in because he's too big. But yeah, they, they do all this with clever like positioning and whatnot. So you never see any of that. But with with the uh, official sub, there's there's just so much censorship. Like you can't see anything. There's just literally these red things with 18 plus all over the screen. And then there's sometimes where they just cut to black entirely and say, please enjoy this part without the visuals, which honestly, it's it's just kind of distracting. It's just like, okay, okay, I see what's going on. Oh, oh, there's there's a lot of red. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay, this there must be a lot going on in this scene. And then I watched the version that someone subbed on Pornhub because, you know, that's censorship free. And it's like, I mean, yeah, there's lots of boobs, but what else is there? Like, they're, they're not showing much. I don't know what you have to censor. They're just boobs. Anyway, I'm not sure what else I can say about the show. I mean, it's definitely interesting. And the reviews seem genuine. That There's a lot of thought put into it. Uh, almost a little too much thought. But yeah, it's an interesting show. I mean, if, if, if you're into that kind of thing, go for it. If you're not into that thing, but you just want to watch a good story, you might still find some enjoyment out of it. Um, it's just, it's kind of compelling. I don't know if that's the right word I want to use. It was certainly an interesting watch, though. Um, would I watch it again? I have no idea. I don't usually watch stuff again, but I, I did enjoy my time watching it. And now it's... I now there's a void in my life of some weird ass thing to watch. So I'll have to find something else now. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening to me uh, rant about almost hentai because that was a thing I did. Uh, be sure to press all the buttons because button pressing is fun. And I hope you have a nice day.